Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 259. Please turn to it. Page number 259 and today is our lesson number 69. The very first problem that we're going to do right now is problem number 23. It's already on the blackboard as you can see most of it. It says which of the following, which of the following metric units of measurement is the most reasonable to measure the amount of liquid oral medication. To which my answer would be it depends on what kind of medication we're talking about and whether you want to get uh, drunk as a skunk or high as a kite. Anyway, here are the choices. Let's start from the bottom. The bottom one is kiloliter. A kilo, of course, we know, we have learned, kilo means 1,000 and therefore kiloliter would be 1,000 liter. Now, just to give you some, idea, some ideas to what 1,000 liter actually means, we learned a long time ago when we were doing our units of measurements, we learned that approximately four liters, you don't, have to know, you, you don't have to know the exact measurement, approximately four liter makes one gallon. Therefore, 1,000 liter is actually 250 gallons, and I doubt very much if you're going to give uh, somebody 250 gallons of oral medication. Similarly, a deciliter is a tenth of a liter. That's still too much. Tenth of a liter is way too much of a medication. And of course, you're definitely not going to give them liter. The answer, of course, is milliliter. Milli, as you recall, means one thousandth. So milliliter is one thousandth of a liter. So, you know, five milliliter, ten milliliter, something like that. Let's go to the next one. Number 24. Number 24. Just give me one second. And number 24 has to do with the concept of independent. Uh, number 24 has to do with the concept of independent variable and dependent variable. It says an average person grows taller with the age. And we have to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable in that statement. Twenty-four. An average person. An average person grows taller with age, which is same as saying. Another way of saying the same thing would have been. This implies. Another way of saying the same thing is that the the how tall a person is. How tall a person is depends on his age. Depends on his age. I'm going to raise all of this now, and I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually digress for a second. I'm going to actually digress over a second, even though we are here for the math part and not the English part. But in the English portion, the English usage portion that they talk about. I'm going, to, I'm going to write it in the wrong ways, so you can see it in the exam if this is what, they, what is given to you. Typically, you hear people go around speaking in this manner. They would say, they would say how, tall, how tall a person is depends on their age. It cannot be there because we're talking about a person, one person. Antecedent here is a person, one person, singular. And therefore, it has to be either his age or her age or his or her age. So here, how tall a person is depends on her age, not not their age. Now, there we go. It depends on depends on the age, and therefore the age is the independent variable because the height the height depends on. You see, height is the dependent variable. Height is the dependent variable. That's all. Height is the dependent variable, and what does height depend on? What does height depend on? Height depends on how, 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 how old the person is. The older the person, the taller they are, typically. I did it again. The older the person, older the person, the taller they are, not taller they are, the taller he or she is. You have to be careful about it. It's okay for, for us to uh, butcher the language once in a while in our daily conversation, but not on this exam. They will mark it as wrong. Do you understand? Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 25. Number 25. Just give me one second. 
number 25. Let's see what number 25 says. Which of the following is a number of centimeters in 4 meters? Oh, this is too simple. We have 4, four meter and the question is how many centimeters is that? Well, we know 1 meter equals how much? Centi means times 100. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. 1 meter is 100 centimeter and therefore 4 meter, you just multiply it by 4 and there's your answer. 4 meter is 400 centimeter. 4 meter is 400 centimeter. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll finish up this exam on the next page on page number 260. That'll be our last video of, of exam number one, test number one and then hopefully we'll be able to begin the test number two soon. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.